Hey there, what's up YouTube? Today I am going to be debunking three myths that beginning sports photographers often have. So let's gear up and let's go and get started. Hello again, I am Jerry Lai and welcome to my sports photography YouTube channel. This is the show where I take my 16 years of working experience as a photojournalist and photo editor and teach you how to become a better sports shooter by getting the most out of your gear and perhaps more importantly, your mind. Today, I want to talk about three myths that many beginning sports photographers have and promptly shatter them. Number one. I could get better photos if only I had better gear. It's no secret that photography equipment can be extraordinarily expensive. Those flagship cameras like the Canon 1DX or the Sony Alpha A9 can cost a minimum of 5,000 US dollars. And those big lenses you see on the professional sidelines now run well over $10,000. So it's not hard for a beginning photographer to have a whole lot of gear envy. Now this is especially so for a beginning photographer who might not have necessarily mastered all the basics and is struggling just to nail exposures correctly on a regular basis. Or a photographer who is new to action photography and hasn't yet adapted to the pace and demands of shooting sports. It's easy to fall into this trap thinking that better gear is like taking magic beans and will turn your photos from this into this. Now obviously pro level equipment has its advantages. I cannot argue that. They have more accurate autofocus systems, they track better, they have better low light properties, and the list just goes on and on and on. But all of that cannot help you overcome poor fundamentals. From knowing your current gear, to knowing the game, to thinking about what you want to shoot, etc, etc, etc. Now I'm going to use myself as an example. Back when I was in college at Northwestern, go Cats, I was shooting with a Canon 10D and a Sigma 7200. So using football as an example, I knew that my limiting factors would be both timing and distance. You see, the 10D only shot at three frames per second and at 200 millimeters, my effective range was only about 20 yards. So to increase my chances of success, I really had to learn the game inside and out so that I could best position myself for where the action was most likely to be. By doing so, I could nail the timing even with just three frames a second. But secondarily, I knew I couldn't just camp out in the end zones because most of my pictures would be too small and fall apart in post. So I would stay only within 10 to 20 yards of the line of scrimmage to maximize my ability to fill the camera frame with action. Now, you could fast forward today, and I am still constantly evaluating the strengths and weaknesses of my gear. For example, while I am now fortunate enough to have access to top of the line gear, I actually often elect to use an Olympus EM1, mostly because of its form factor and incredibly unique range of lenses. It's a very capable camera, but I know its limitations, namely its poor ISO performance and arguably worse autofocus tracking. So, because of that, I save it for day games or events where athletic movements are very predictable, such as baseball, as opposed to indoor sports with erratic movements, such as basketball. So, to really beat this point home, I'll say it again. Top of the line gear may help you make consistently better photos, but if you have a strong understanding of photography fundamentals and know the pros and cons to your current gear and how they may work in your particular sport, you can really make some amazing photos. And now onto the second myth, access. If only I were on the sidelines too, I could get better photos just like you. Now, I'll tell you that is absolutely untrue. Now, I will admit being on the sidelines is certainly cool as, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna make better photos. Oftentimes, I don't even get access to the field. But many other times, I'll actually intentionally position myself in public seating areas. There are a number of reasons for doing this, but a main reason for doing so is that giving yourself an elevated view clears out all the clutter from the background so that all you're left are the players and the action. There are no marshals, ball boys, or other distractions in the way. Other times, you can make unique photos playing with the patterns of light on the field. 
or you could take a dramatic scene setting photo that takes advantage of a wild sunset. Photos like these are only possible from ticketed seating areas. Finally, as you all know, a large part of sports photography is luck. Sometimes when you're on the field, all your best angles are blocked. We like to call this as ref's ass. If you're on the stands or away from the prime photo positions, you actually end up being in a position to get the shot. I really can't tell you the number of times I've seen fellow photographers get great shots that run huge nationally because they were photographing from common areas. And now, onto the third and final myth that I am going to be debunking today. The third myth is, you must shoot pro sports to make good photos. And of course, just like the other two myths above, that is absolutely untrue. Now of course, just like the field access myth above, I will admit, yes, shooting sports is really, really darn cool at the professional level. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to get better photos than you. And just because I made a picture of a pro athlete doesn't mean that that photo is portfolio worthy. It just means that I recognize who it is. These days as a photo editor, I get a lot of prospective photographer inquiries and review a lot of portfolios. And I see a lot of great up and coming talent. But one common mistake that I see is that people have a tendency to sprinkle in a professional event that they somehow manage to get access to, even if the photos are not the strongest. Somewhat paradoxically, a lot of the best sports photos that you see are not from professional leagues because the play isn't as crisp, which means you're more likely to see a peak action photo, or the fields are not as well manicured, so you're likely to see a lot of dust or grass being kicked up. So keep all that in mind if you ever have the opportunity to showcase your work to others, that it's absolutely not always about being able to photograph the pros. And so there you have it. Those are three common sports photography myths that I have busted. As you can see, having very strong fundamentals, good working knowledge of your gear's advantages and disadvantages, and of course, a small pinch of luck will go a long way in helping you become a better sports photographer. Definitely take these points to heart and you will see yourself improving in leaps and bounds. Thank you very much for watching again today. If you enjoyed this content or found it helpful, definitely leave a like or a comment in the section below. I'll be coming out with new content every two to four weeks or so, so be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out. Thanks again for watching. I can't wait to see you all again next time. Bye now.